Reconciliation, you know, is the hot topic word of the day. Reconciliation is dead. I've been told many times that reconciliation is dead. But is that really so? I've heard a lot of people say that in the face of ongoing frustrations when it comes to true freedom and true equitable opportunity in Canada. Well, reconciliation is, is inevitable. I mean, you're always going to have a relationship with this country. But if we look at our relationship status today, you know, what would we, what would, we, what would be our relationship status between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples? The question is, what kind of relationship do you want? And if you want to have a relationship of distance, then have a relationship of distance, but just know how to have it. We stand in a moment of the greatest promise that I've ever seen for this country. Complicated, polarized, toxic, estranged. But I think it's time now that we pause for a moment to review our history together. A historic relationship between the Crown and Canada's Aboriginal peoples. In order to educate the children properly, we must separate them from their families. Some people may say that this is hard, but if we want to civilize them, we must do that. A federal cabinet minister, 1883. The great aim of our legislation has been to do away with the tribal system and assimilate the Indian people in all respects with the other inhabitants of the Dominion as speedily as they are fit to change. Here in Canada, oppression is legislated through something called the Indian Act. Indian children in the residential schools die at a much higher rate than in their villages. But this does not justify a change in the policy of this department, which is geared towards a final solution of our Indian problem. Duncan Campbell Scott, Deputy Superintendent of Indian Affairs. Between the 1960s and the 1980s, tens of thousands of Indigenous kids were taken from their families and put into the child welfare system. The amendment doesn't promise immediate action, it promises more talk. Mr. Speaker, I stand before you today to offer an apology to former students of Indian residential schools. In just over two years since the Truth and Reconciliation Commission released its final report and put forward 94 calls to action. We cannot look for quick and easy solutions because there are none. We need to be able to look at this from the perspective of where do we want to be in three or four or five or seven generations from now when we talk about the relationship between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people in this country. A First Nation says the remains of more than 200 children have been located, buried on the site of a former residential school. So the point here is we need to work on this relationship. Can reconciliation be accomplished? And if so, who's responsible? I think it's going to start from this place of awareness, right? Reconciliation is not something that we're now doing, and we in this context being Canada. It's not something that we're doing out of pity for Indigenous people. Reconciliation is not tokenistic. If, through your good intentions of being inclusive, you are inviting us to come sing, dance, and drum at your event, but you haven't invited us to the decision-making, planning, and resource-sharing table, then you're being tokenistic. The thing to do, it seems to me, is to really, you know, embark on a learning journey. Reconciliation is not putting the burden on Indigenous peoples of educating you. And so we need you. We need you to be a part of this great dream, this idea that we can live together in this country, together. Reconciliation cannot be about beneficence. That is giving to someone without asking what they need, but rather deciding for them. I believe that reconciliation is an opportunity for Canada to accomplish being the country that it is always intended to be. Reconciliation is providing your children the right knowledge so that they can respectfully get along with and play with Indigenous children. When we are reconciled, we will live together peacefully and in harmony. Reconciliation is about being accountable to yourself, to learning and sharing within your circle of influence, to and experiencing the joys and the struggles of life alongside us. When we are reconciled, we will be gentle with each other. What can I do as a citizen of the planet for reconciliation? 
Reconciliation is donating your time and money to support Indigenous leadership and Indigenous-led work. When we are reconciled, justice and equality will prevail. Reconciliation is speaking up when you hear racial slurs and hate speech, speaking against racial profiling and injustices, and amplifying, not replacing Indigenous voices. And when we are reconciled, Aboriginal people in this country will take their place alongside all of you, expressing their own ethnicity. Reconciliation isn't dead unless you choose to let it die. Expressing freedom from their very souls because they haven't been there with you. I want you to walk with me down that pathway to reconciliation. So I have no calls to action. I have no prescription and I have no request or recommendation. Instead, for each and every one of you, I have an invitation. Even though you didn't create the problem, you get to be part of the solution. We've inherited a very unhealthy country. We live in a country where it's still possible to hear people say things like this. Why can't you just get over it and move on? And my answer has always been, why can't you always remember this? Because this is about memorializing those people who have been victims of a great wrong. Why don't you tell the United States to get over 9-11? Why don't you tell this country to get over all of the veterans who died in the Second World War instead of honoring them once a year? Why don't you tell your families to stop thinking about all of your ancestors who died? Why don't you turn down and, and burn down all of those headstones that you put up for all of your friends and relatives over the years? It's because it's important for us to remember. We learn from it. I invite you to embark on a learning journey and embark on this learning journey that will transform the way you look at this country and its people. And more importantly, strengthen that relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples alike. Not just for today, but more importantly, for tomorrow. Reconciliation can start where you are with what you're doing. Never underestimate the power of a small group of people. Have the courage to be uncomfortable alongside us as you choose the path to reconciliation. And until people show that they have learned from this, we will never forget. And we should never forget even once they have learned from it because this is a part of who we are. It's not just a part of who we are as survivors and children of survivors and relatives of survivors, but as part of who we are as a nation. And this nation must never forget what it once did to its most vulnerable people. We must respond to the call to reconciliation because it's the right thing to do.